Mr. President, thank you so much for being a part of this and sitting down with me today. First off, how are you feeling post your injury and how has the week been here? Well, I'm feeling fine and uh, I give that credit to the Habitat in the spirit. If you work all week on the Habitat site and don't get better, in many ways, you know, it's kind of a disappointment. So I've gotten better this week, physically and mentally and, you know, spiritually as well. You know, people are asking, where do you find the energy at 95 years old to do this for 36 years in a row now to pick up that nail gun and continue the construction? Well, I, I run out of energy every now and then and have to, you know, sit down and rest a little while, which I didn't have to do when I first started. But uh, I think the, the general spirit of a Habitat site just kind of brings out the best in everybody that volunteers here. And we have worked before we came to Nashville, not counting the ones here, with 103,000 volunteers. And we've built almost 4,500 homes. So, you know, I can look back on those days with great days of pleasure and pride and also gratitude. What was it about this charity decades ago that struck you long enough to be a part of it for this long? You know, I like the idea that every Habitat house is not a gift to the people. The poor people who get a house for the first time, that's exciting. But also, to not know that they pay full price for the house, we have a long time to pay for it. We don't charge any interest to poor people in America. So uh, all of those things tie together to make it very gratifying to me. And I like the equality of treatment of people on a general habitat site because the homeowners get lost in the crowd. They're just among other people trying to build a house. And so everybody's proud of a homeowner's house when they get finished. And speaking of homeowner, the house that you're working on is for a lady named Tara. Uh, with a child of her own. We spoke to her earlier this week who says she was really trying to find affordable living in Nashville, had to go outside of the city limits. What is your message to people like her who are in that position to where affordable living isn't so easy to attain? Well, I think I, I appreciate what they do. I'm very proud that they are chosen by the local Habitat organization to be one of the new homeowners but also the example they set for the rest of the city. Because the city fathers, you know, the ones that run the financial and, and political side of Nashville, know that this is a very rapidly growing community. And it, it can't continue to grow and expand and be prosperous as, as long as affordable housing is forgotten. So it's a very sad community when they wake up one morning and find that their school teachers can't afford a down payment on a house. Or, or very expensive lots. And even their firemen and policemen quite often they can't pay enough money out of their income uh, if they make you know, the average salary to, to rent a decent house or to buy a, a habitat house. So I think that that message that they send to the rest of the community is a very valuable one for the city fathers and others to remember. If you were president or somewhat in an elected position, what would you do to help with the affordable housing crisis, not just in Nashville, but really across the country? Well, I think the federal government has a great deal to do about the general attitude. I think if the president just mentions affordable housing need every now and then when he travels around the country or she travels around the country, that's a very valuable thing just for the president to try to set an example about the very extreme importance of affordable housing and what happens to a city when the, when the city fathers neglect that problem, it develops when there's no decent homes to be rented or bought you know, by an average citizen who has to work for a living. Mr. Carter, what do you think your presidential legacy is? Well, you know, we've been a country now for 243 years, since 1776. And I have just looked up recently, and we've only been at peace 16 years out of 243 years. We've been at war 227 years. And I'm, I'm very grateful that uh, a large part of that 16 years was when I was in the White House. And we, and we, you know, promoted human rights and equality of treatment among people. And I always try to tell the truth, so, and, and succeeded. So telling the truth is a very important basis on which to build life's principles. I used to have a, a high school principal named Ms. Judy Coleman. And she used to tell us we must accommodate changing times, like we have now, times change every year, but we must cling to principles that never change. And I think one of those basic principles is to tell the truth.
because you can't be a leader respected by all people under your leadership if you're not well known to be somebody that abides by the truth. Times are changing and obviously we are in a different administration, a lot of divisiveness out there. Do you think that principle still holds true right now? I think the principle is there, but sometimes it's been neglected by some of our leaders. But, uh, but the principles don't change. And then an individual person, yeah, every, every person who lives in America can, can decide for him or herself, I'm going to always tell the truth, even when it's not to my advantage to do so. So telling the truth is important for everybody, as, as long as, as general, along with generosity and, and care for one another and being willing to sacrifice some of your you know, very high station if you are wealthy and so forth, to help others. So helping other people and telling the truth and, and being generous with, with what you own or have as a capability are all very important parts. Well, telling the truth, obviously, we're in the middle of this imp impeachment inquiry. What is your advice to President Trump and where do you stand with this impeachment inquiry? I think the inquiry is well justified. We don't yet know what the inquiry is going to reveal. Uh, we have some suspicions about what might might be, but I think uh, America, American citizens are beginning to become more and more uh, amenable or supportive of the basic inquiry, and and that means they want to know what really happened, and that's what we hope to get out of the inquiry is just to tell just the honest truth about what has happened in the past, and what might happen under this leadership in the future, and if it turns out to be a negative response when the truth is revealed, uh, then impeachment might be a possibility. So what is your advice to the president now? Tell the truth. Don't uh, Twitter so many times a day. Uh, and uh, be uh, eager to treat everybody the same. No matter if you're black or white or if you're you know, gay or straight or uh, if you're a Christian or a Muslim, or if you're a new immigrant or somebody who's been here a long time with your family, treat everybody the same. That's a very important aspect of democracy itself, and certainly when in a country like ours, it's been the hallmark of demo democratic life in the past. Earlier this week, you used the term stonewall as far as the White House uh, not necessarily complying with the inquiry. Is that something you stand by? Well, I think what, what the reason for stonewalling quite often is so that the truth will not be revealed. If you have something to conceal of which you're ashamed, uh, then the best thing to do is to uh, make sure that the facts don't, don't be you know, available to the public. So I haven't changed my mind about that. Nashville has the lar largest Kurdish population in the U.S. And obviously the big headlines this week is the troops leaving Syria. Where do you stand in all of that? I think it's a, a sin and a shame to abandon our Kurd allies who have been the foremost fighters in trying to get rid of, uh, of, of ISIS and so forth. So when we, in effect, pledge our word of honor we're going to stand by you in the future like you've stood by us now. You know, that's another one of those uh, departures from the truth that concerns me very much. What was your message? I know people would be watching. I know there's a rally happening today as well with the Kurdish community. What is your message to, to them who may be looking up to a political figure? I would apologize for a change of uh, mind where the United States has betrayed a long-standing trust. The Kurds have done their share of carrying out the bargain. I think it's now time and very crucial that the United States do what it promised to the Kurds. We are entering the 2020 election. What do you think the biggest issues are that need to be addressed? Well, I've covered some of those in the past. I would like to see the United States of America be a, a true superpower in maintaining the peace and human rights and environmental equality and treating everybody the same. When you hear the term longest living former president in U.S. history, what goes through your mind? Uh, 
I, I think about how grateful I am. You know, one of the important things for a marriage to be successful is to choose the right partner to start with. And I chose Rosa and she agreed to marry me finally after turning me down a time or two. Uh, but she agreed to, of course, to get married 73 and a half years ago. So we're still, you know, depending on each other for support in our old age. She's in her 90s also now. So uh, I think just the things that I think about is how grateful I am for the benefits that have come to my life. We have a large and rapidly growing family. Uh, all of us are pretty well healthy now. And uh, I've overcome, you know, cancer myself in my brain and in my liver. And, uh, but I, I've overcome it, which, I, for which I'm thankful. So, and we still get, have a chance to spend a little bit of our effort when we're able to uh, by supporting Habitat for Humanity and, and taking advantage of the benefits that Habitat offers. Mr. Carter, thank you for your time. I appreciate it and best of luck to everything else. Thank you very much. Thank you. I've enjoyed being with you. <laughs> Likewise. Thank you.